Okay, so after the last video, someone asked if there was something I could do that make these buttons more easily distinguished between their various states. So if you run this right now, just looking at it, you really can't tell the difference. So yes, if you point at it, there's interaction. So if you do a mouse over, that gets a little bit transparent, that becomes a little transparent, and that doesn't. Their point is, look, you should be able to just look at this without interacting with it and knowing, hey, I own this, I don't own this, um, I don't own this, and I haven't met the criteria. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to track more states. We're ultimately going to add more variables to check the state of and just not with a coring, but actually capture that state with a variable saying that it's uh, that you do have it or you don't have it. Because we really haven't done that yet. What we've done, and I'm going to jump to the script now for skill tree. What we do is if you click on the button and it's active, it makes some changes. Like it changes this factor, but there really isn't a variable that says, yes, you own this skill. So that's what we're going to eventually do. But again, this is an iterative process, so one thing at a time. So right now, the Melee 2 button is the only one that is disabled by default because we don't meet the criteria. So what we're going to do is the criteria is going to stay the same for now. But these two statements, I'm going to disable the button by a different means. So what we're going to do is we're going to remark these out, or you can delete them if you don't want them. I tend to not delete code just in case I need it for something else. And we're going to do something slightly different. So it's the same beginning, melee 2, because that's the button we're interested in. But it's dot interactable equals false, which means this will therefore be melee 2 dot interactable dot true. And you're immediately going to see a difference. So let's go ahead and save this. We'll run it. So see, that is much more evident that there's a difference. Just by looking at this, you're like, okay, there's a difference between this state and this state, even without interacting with it. Now, the criteria has not changed, so which means that if I click on this to buy it and click on this to buy it, now this one becomes interactable. So it's just there's a greater difference in color. So that's the first one. The second one is changing the color of the object itself. So when you've, uh, excuse me, change the color of a bought skill. So right now, when you click on say, melee, the melee one button, this function runs. So what we want to do is we really want to change the color of the button permanently once you've clicked on it. So how do we do that? Well, there's a very easy way to change the color. So let's do Since that button is melee one, because this is the melee one increase. So melee one dot get component, and it's an image dot color. And now you can just modify the color. Sorry, that's actually new color, not new vector three. My apologies, it does make a difference. Equals new color. Now what this does is this approach to color is it's basically a percentage, zero to one. So zero percent to 100%. So what you're doing is it's not necessarily adding color so much as you're subtracting color. So we're saying zero red, 100% of the green, and then 0% of the blue. Now, if you doubt me and you say, well, is that really the way it works? Go ahead and plug in 1, 1, and 1, and you'll see that there's no difference because you're saying use 100% of the R, G, and B of the image. So you're actually subtracting rather than adding. Okay, so melee1.getComponentImageColor equals new color. Now watch what happens. So this is if you click on the button when it's active. It is now green. So now you have three different states. Inactive, active but not bought, active and bought. 
But again, even though the color has changed, there's still nothing really preventing you from clicking on that again. And you might want to because maybe you have to get level 2, level 3, level 5 of this skill. We're going to look at that in the next tutorial. So um, that is something that's really going to be derived from what we're going to put in place today. Because like I said here, we're going to start creating variables that capture a state. So rather than just modifying your factors, we're actually going to have a separate variable that captures what you've done. Okay, so now you can just do that with the max HP. You just have to make sure you change the name of the button at the beginning. So you don't want it to be melee one. You want it to be, is it max HP increase? Nope, that is, we want it max HP button, I believe. So if we come up here, yep, max HP button is the button. So this is the max HP increase. So just like this, we've said if you've clicked on the HP button, change its color. So watch what happens here. So click on that, it's green. Click on that, it's green-ish. But like I said, you took out the red so it doesn't really look right. But again, you, you know how to do it now. So you've owned those, and now this one becomes interactive. So you have the own, and you have the um, ones that you don't own but are now interactive. So like I said, you now have three states. You have accessible but not bought, accessible and bought, and then... Um, inaccessible because it can't be afforded. So not bought but accessible, uh, accessible and bought, and then not accessible at all. So uh, those three states. Now, like I said, we're going to look at having uh, multiple levels of bought, but not quite yet. This one, like I said, is kind of just a cleanup that people wanted to see more difference between the pictures. Now, the next one really doesn't even require any coding. It can just be done in the inspector. And that is, when you're highlighting it, can you see more of a difference? Absolutely. So, right now, if you have any of the buttons clicked, in fact, in this case, we're going to click all three since this is something that's being changed in the inspector. As you can see, there's a highlighted color, which means you are pointing at it. So, if you click on this, and you can choose, I don't know, maybe like an orange color. Almost kind of like an advisory, like, oh, by the way, something's going to happen. In that case, you know, it's your spending points. So this case, not really coding per se. We're just changing the highlight color. There, see, it's like an orange color. Orangish color. No response because it's disabled. So just like that, I think that we have addressed the main concern of distinguishing between what you have and what you don't have. So you've got... Again, in, um, unavailable, available, available, and highlighted, and bought. So even though this is a short lesson, I think that's just about it. Because at this point, uh, I've really addressed the issue that was asked for, and that is distinguishing between the buttons. I suppose we could create the variables that, disting that, that um, tell you how many levels of uh, a skill you've bought. So I'd say we could just use integers for that. So public static int and it's going to be Suppose we could do melee one level, and it starts at zero. Public static int melee two 
level and public static int max HP level. Save that. Make sure no errors occur. You always want to make sure you don't accidentally use the name of a variable twice in the same script. So now what we'll do is we'll just increase those. So melee increase level one. And so it makes it a little bit confusing because I specifically called this level one and called this level two. And in fact, there's going to be multiple levels within this level. So melee one level plus equals one. So melee one level has been increased by one when you click on this button. This is max HP. So this is max HP level plus equals one. That happens when you click, click on the max HP increase button. And then melee two level plus equals one when you click on that button. And so by doing that, you're now tracking how many levels of the skill you have. So maybe there'll only be two increases for the max HP, but there'll be five increases for the melee increase level one. So, okay, that's definitely it for this lesson then, because I don't want to get into the next part, because we have to start making these a little bit more complicated. And I want to give uh, you guys a chance to work on this. Uh, kind of let this sink in, and then, like I said, we'll we'll get into this because in the next lesson because it's going to get more complicated because we're going to have to start taking into consideration what level this is because right now it's been um, pretty much binary, and that is you can click on it or you can't click on it, and when you do click on it, there's an increase, but it really doesn't track that you have it other than here. Now we've actually captured separately just that button how many times you've used that skill all right so that should do it and i say that and then i know it's an error there is a, a typo rather than doing a semicolon down here it was like an apostrophe or an a comma just make sure that's a semicolon at the end okay that should do it